Hey everybody, my name is Tim. Welcome back to the channel and welcome to Procedural Puzzles version 2, the solutions video. So in today's video, we're going to find out who is the winner of uh, Procedural Puzzles. And um, there were even more entries than last time. So I got about 27 entries and I even got the last entry this morning. So I still benchmarked that and threw it in. Uh, you can find all of the solutions in the uh, with a Dropbox link in the description. I've also shared an Excel in there with all of my, um, all of my benchmarks. So I've benchmarked all of the... Um, all of the all of the solutions and there's a really big difference between uh between some of the ones like the the fastest ones are like really 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 fast you'll find out in a second um and it's been super interesting to to look at these files because like there there's been a very big difference in performance and the way they're built and uh, for example, something I found very interesting is that, that a lot of people always seem to think that VEX is always faster. Uh, you're going to find out when we, once we get to some, to look through some of the solutions is that, uh, that's not necessarily the case because the, uh, the winning solution actually doesn't use any VEX. Uh, and there are some solutions that are very heavy on the VEX, uh, which are fast, but not nearly as fast as the winning solution. So there's a, there's a ton of those interesting sort of little tidbits in there. And I think you'll learn a lot if you go through all of these files. Uh, I personally learned a lot, like there a lot of people were using some notes and some techniques that I have, I didn't use before. So we're gonna, we're gonna dive into that. All right, so here we are in the Excel where I recorded all of the benchmarks. And the winner is, as you can see here, uh, I didn't order them. They're just how I benchmarked them to order. But the winner is uh, Falcon Safadre. I hope you're, I hope you're announce your, uh, your pronounce your name correctly, but Congrats, you are the winner of $50 worth of Bitcoins. I will contact you and send you your Bitcoin and then you can keep it or sell it and do fun stuff with it. Drink drink beers with it, buy coffee, do whatever you want. Uh, congrats. Uh, and to everybody else, uh, better luck next time. Can only have one winner, uh, but uh, next time you're free to try again with the next challenge, which will, uh, like I'm gonna try to do this about once a month, like I mentioned. So there are gonna, gonna be more interesting challenges. Um, but, uh, yeah, let's just talk a little bit about these, uh, about these solutions. So as you can see, there's a very big difference between these, these runs, like, uh, some of the slower ones here took like here, this one took 37. Uh, so I, I did three runs by the way, to just see if there's, uh, was any major differences. So some of the slower ones here, this one took 37 seconds. There's, uh, there's a couple like 10, 18, like again, mine was around 16. So also lower, lower of the pack. You, you'll, you'll, you'll see why, like my, my, my solution isn't that great. And again, I didn't spend a lot of time uh, optimizing this myself. That was your job here for this, uh, for this, for this, uh, for this, for this puzzle. Um, but you can see the fastest ones are really fast. So Falcon Safadre, here's uh, first run, 0.414 seconds. Second one, 0 0.424, and third one, 0 0.422 uh, seconds. And because this was so fast, I figured I'd throw in another 25 by 25 grid and a 40 by 40 grid for the faster solutions. And we can get, we can see some interesting uh, stuff happening there because uh, you can see this solution is the fastest across the, just a regular challenge. Also, it's the fastest all along the 25 by 25 grid. But once we get to the 40 by 40 grid, actually Yaniv Gurali's solution comes out on top. Uh, so I guess this one has some stuff that threads better over time. Maybe there's a couple of just not that well threaded nodes in, 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 um, in this solution. Uh, so you can see this one slightly outperforms it uh, in the 40 by 40 grid. So it might just be if you build this in the production and you have a scenario where you have literally thousands of stuff to run through, then this might be a better solution than this one. But this one performs better in this uh, in this current scenario that we have. So you can see there's a whole uh, there's a there's a ton of different different things that go into it. And uh, in general, it was super like super educational for myself as well to look through all of these files because uh, you're you're going to be up for a couple of surprises once you start going through some of the files. So I'm going to run through some of the solutions uh, during this video. And there's there's a couple of very interesting, uh, interesting tidbits there. Because for example, the winning solution actually doesn't use any VEX. And there are uh, a lot of very heavy VEX solutions. And those were very nice, very clean setup. 
Um, but they weren't the fastest. And um, I think that, that is quite interesting because I, I see a lot like online, everybody's always with Houdini, like, oh, do I need to... Do I need to lear learn Vex? Uh, Vex makes everything faster. Vex is not always faster, guys. Uh, it's it's It can definitely be a lot faster, but it's not always faster. Remember that a lot of these Houdini uh, nodes that are in Houdini itself are hard-coded in C, so they can potentially be a lot faster. Uh, of course, they're less flexible than doing it in Vex, but I think that, that, that's going to be quite interesting to see. So I'm going to just run you through a couple of these, uh, a couple of these solutions, just, just uh, walk through it. Uh, I didn't super in detail go through through all of them yet. Uh, I just checked if they were correct, and that's about it. Uh, a couple of these solutions, by the way. So I I did notice in um, about halfway through my benchmark that I had accidentally uh, benchmarked a couple in Houdini 18.5. So then I went back to the faster solutions and I re-benchmarked them in 19 because of course it should be benchmarked in 19. So a couple of the slower solutions might actually have cooked a little bit faster. Uh, because I accidentally benchmarked him in 18.5, but I discovered that halfway through because I I have like I I just, I just accidentally had the session open for 18.5 still. Um, so some of the slow solutions here might have actually been maybe a tiny bit faster if I if they were to cook in in 19. There was actually one interesting one from Johan Buchhove, um, which actually didn't cook properly in 18.5 and cooked perfectly in. Um, in 19 so that might be interesting to have a look at it as well but i guess just like without further ado let's just dive into houdini and just uh, look through my own solution first which is a pretty crappy solution <laughs> like if compared to all of these other stuff uh but i mean it, it sort of works and uh but there's a lot of better ones here and i personally learned a lot so let's go into houdini all right so we're here inside of houdini apprentice because else is gonna keep complaining that the license is downgraded blah 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 and i don't want that so let's open my own shitty version first let's see where where it is there we go um and again probably all of these solutions are better than mine um but let's just go through it all right and i have a very hacky solution again but like i didn't really take a lot of time to sort of optimize uh, any of this stuff oh i guess the stuff here doesn't necessarily we don't necessarily need those uh, but let me just walk you through it and maybe you still learn something even though it's a little bit of a messy thing. And I I, I, I use my fuse, convert line and fuse technique again, which is like it doesn't get the best result here. Um, uh, Yeah, all right. So first what I'm doing is I'm branching out here. You can see mine is not even compiled. So no compile block. So that's why it's not the fastest either. So there were a couple of things here in here that didn't compile. Uh, I'm not sure which one it was, but Here's a couple. So I'm polyfilling the uh, the things there. Then I am blasting uh, not the patches, so we keep the big and the small patch. Then I'm measuring the area, and then we're extracting here the size of the area. So we're getting a min and a max area. And then we're gonna remove the smallest one, the smallest one. And then we have just one patch. And then over here, I guess I could uh, could have. Ah, okay, so what I'm doing here with the smooth is actually I'm just smoothing this in so everything gets like pretty close. So I guess uh, so, so they all get close together. Then I'm grouping, uh, grouping some stuff here. I guess this could be could be smaller, but I'm just grouping a bunch. Then I'm doing distance along geometry, so it will calculate sort of the distance along the geometry. Then I'm converting a line, so I'm converting a line from this thing, and I'm doing a fuse, and I guess I am really over cranking that here but i uh, uh so i'm fusing it and get one line then i'm doing an add then i get just a couple of points here then i'm sorting them by the distance so again there was an attribute across the curve then i'm adding a new curve in there uh reason why i'm doing that is because if you see here you still have the 64 primitives and then if you blast it away you know you only have one primitive uh then so you get one line and then you do that for r let me just go put it to Actually, cook on the one thing because else it's just going to be slow. So if you do that for everything, then you get these things. And you can see my solution actually doesn't give give super clean uh, edges. So at at where they get get bigger, it gets these sort of uh, sort of curvy things at the end. Uh, but in general, like it does work. It just it doesn't have a super clean line all the way through. Uh, most of the other solutions do, but now you saw mine, and now now let's uh, let's let's look at some actual interesting solutions. So. Let's have a look at the uh, at the winning solution. 
So let's open Yaniv Gorali's uh, thing. Uh, let me close my other window there over here on the right because it keeps popping up. All right, let's open, let's have a look at, uh, no, no, not Yaniv Gorali, uh, Falcon Savadre, sorry. Um, even though Yaniv Gorali's solution was also very fast, I was just looking at the wrong name. Um, let me see where it is, Falcon, Falcon, where are you? Where are you looking for the Falcon? Oh, right. Yeah, here it is. Oh, so I, I, yeah, I put Jack in before it because I got, got sent that later and I added it to the Dropbox with my phone. So, so I didn't forget to check it. And it was good. Did like, I actually missed his file and then he sent me a private message on Twitter of like, Hey, did you, did you, or he, uh, didn't send me a private message. Like he tagged me again. Like, did you, did you see my solution? So I was like, okay, oh, I already did the benchmarks. And then I went through that one and it actually turned out to be the winner. So it was, uh, it was quite interesting. Um, so let's just uh, cook it so you can see how fast it is. So I just do the copy here. Like the copy takes longer than the actual, the actual solution or the, oh yeah. Okay. I still have it set here to 40 by 40. So let me just, that's what I was doing for the, uh, for the other ones. Let me just uh, remove that stuff. So it was 25 by five. Okay. All right, here we go. Um, so yeah, highlight it. Uh, I just put a VDB from polygons there because this is an easy way to clean my cache without going to the clash thing. So this will would force it to sort of reset. So that's why I put that personally there. So let's, uh, let's benchmark it. Boom. 4.4, uh, well, 4.3 this time, but I'm, I'm recording at the moment, so that's why it's a little slower, but you can see it's incredibly fast. So let's dive into it, let's just see uh, see what he did. All right, so let's go in there, boop, there we go. Let's just clean that stuff up. All right, um, all right, so oh, let, me, let me just put it back to just one. All right, so connectivity, pretty straightforward. Uh, there's a compile block here. If you don't know what a compile block is, essentially what a compile block does is if you have a for each loop. Um, so a for each loop uh, will run over each piece. And by default, that's not necessarily multi-threaded unless some nodes in there are maybe uh, use some multi-threading. But you can actually, with a compile block, you can tell the for each loop here to say multi-thread where compiled. And what that, that is going to do is this is going to run each iteration on a separate thread on your uh, system. Uh, you cannot always use it because some nodes are not compilable. Uh, every Houdini release, they are adding more nodes that are compilable. Uh, but essentially, uh, if, if you can compile, it's generally a lot faster. So let me just, let's have a look at this, at this solution. So he's, 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 uh, polyfilling it here, um, reversing prim numbers and then see what he's doing here. Yeah. So, uh, this was something that was interesting. To me, there's a, a step attribute, which I actually uh, didn't know about. So that was something that I learned and like, I'm stupid for, for not knowing that, but if you have the group expand, so what group expand does, it sort of expands your group across, across a piece of geometry, but actually uh, each step can be recorded as an attribute. Let me change my work thing here, All right? So it will actually write that out as an uh, as an attribute. Uh, let's see. So loop ID, you can see each step gets returned as an attribute. And he's extracting points uh, from each step. So it's extracting the uh, the centroid, extract centroid. Actually, you didn't know there was an extract centroid. So, which is very stupid because it's, I guess, a very basic node. So I don't know when that got introduced, but I just actually didn't know that that existed. So. Uh, I guess the worry though, like there's some of these basic stuff that I just didn't know apparently. Um, he's just deleting loop ID and then just adding curve and then for each, uh, they're just merging the for each. And then because it's compiled, it runs really fast. So you can see it's generally, it's not super complex, but it's really fast. And as you can see, there's no vex here. So um, very clean, very nice solution and um, yeah, nice. Uh, and, and like a lot of the, uh, like some of the other solutions that were very close actually use very similar 
uh, techniques. We can maybe have a look at, uh, at some of those. So I believe, let's have a look at which other ones. Uh, oh yeah, Baptiste uh, Mal, uh, uh, Malbranc. Baptiste Malbranc, I hope, I hope I pronou I'm pronouncing these names correctly, but let's have a look at uh, that one. Because that one was pretty similar to what we have here. So let's open that one. All right. So is, again, this one is also really fast. So maybe we can do a benchmark for that one. There we go. And you can see it's very close to whatever there. So there's there was uh, like actually it's now it's cooking. Oh wait, there we go. I was highlighting the wrong thing. So highlighting the subnet here. 0.45. So the one was uh, really fast as well. Let me go back to uh, this one. Let's go in here. You see, there's a couple more notes here. Um, so over here, also measuring uh, the area similar to what I did. Um, then setting a group based on this patch here, and then he's group expanding it. And again, also using the same step attribute, which was interesting. And then also extract centroid. So very similar uh, to before. What he ended up doing is first making curves here, which is, I guess, an interesting sort of uh, thing. So he's he's removing uh, in between stuff. So group expands, then he's actually generating curves from that thing. So this this in itself could be a very interesting technique to use if you wanna if you wanna generate these these curves. Uh, and then adding it, and then in the end you're all you're left with. Nice, nice result. Um, so yeah, like very similar, but still a little bit different. So let's have a look at some other solutions. Let's have a look at uh, Yunus Pusat. Um, he might know him as Animatrix. Um, so he uh, he's the one who did uh, Pragmatic Vex, which is a great Vex course. If you if you haven't checked it out, it's probably the most in depth Vex course there is for um, for Houdini in general. It's it's amazing. Um, so you can see here is a uh, pretty much VEX only solution. Uh, so let's benchmark it. So that's why, like, this is going to be interesting to to see this stuff. So let's just have a look at this, and let me let me just clear my. So that's why I'm just throwing this stuff in here because if I do this, it will just force this other stuff to recook as well. It's just easier than uh, doing another thing to uh, clear clear everything. So I'm just going to go performance monitor. I'm going to record. And 1.1312. Uh, I'm not sure if it's the same as it was here, but you can see it's definitely it's it's very fast. Uh, don't get me wrong; like it's a, it's a great solution. It's very fast. It's very clean. Like there's almost no notes in here, but it's not the fastest. And that's just an interesting takeaway here, because I I I always get the feeling that some people just think that fact is always faster. Uh, you can see very nice sort of uh just very clean facts so i'm not gonna i'm gonna I'm gonna try to to go through this uh but it's uh it's it's very nice very clean setup um and it's just interesting to see because this 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 is very elegant but not in this case not particularly the fastest like this might uh if you're doing some sort of production scene thing and you're making uh like a real tool that's gonna uh, work on a ton of different things. This this might be a better solution because you can just add your new functionality to Vax, uh, make it work for all edge cases. Uh, so that, that might might be a good solution. But I just thought it was interesting to sort of see, um, yeah, see the see the differences between um, between sort of just Vax and um, and stop stuff. We can we can try maybe running this uh, on the forty by forty grid. See see. How fast it is there? I'm just gonna. I haven't tried that one yet, so let's try that. So I'm just gonna put this to manual. I'm gonna try this on the 40 by 40 grid. Right. Let's have that. Let's check that out. All right. So let's try that. Uh, performance monitor record. And see how that's gonna perform. So maybe, maybe, maybe it might uh, perform really well. But thanks, I I don't know. Like I haven't tried this one yet, but let, let's see how it's gonna go. Twenty-eight 
20 seconds. So it's actually, it's it's uh, it'll still, it's not, not the fastest, but it's still, it's it's very respectable. And if you're going to compare this to some of the other um, solutions here that were in the one something uh, mark, so 115. Uh, yeah, okay, like I haven't tried that one yet, but it could, it's still, it's very comparable to the ones that are, so for example, um, like there are, like this one cooks in 0.5 seconds and then the 40 by 40 grid is 16 seconds. So this one by units with effects only was 1.3, 1.4 ish seconds for this one, but it's only 20 seconds for the 40 by 40 grid. So you can see there's there's difference. And again, that's also why I mentioned like hardware can also really make a difference. Like if you're on a single threaded machine, uh, the, your performance band, like uh, on a so single thread, I mean, uh, like for example, uh, Ryzen 5950X, which has very high clock speed, a little bit less coarse than my machine. The benchmarks might be completely different there. So that's why I also mentioned the hardware in the uh, in the previous video. So while we're at it, maybe also have a look at the previous uh, editions winner. Um, there we go. So Bastian Schiffa. He also put in another entry, which was also really fast, but not the fastest. So. That's, we can, uh, we can do a little benchmark. So again, let me just clear the whole thing with. So if I just put this here and then disable it, it will essentially also just force whatever is down there to also cook. So I just have a look at it. And really fast. Not the fastest, but pretty fast. 3.9 fans. So let's let's have a look through the solution here. And let's go, just go in. And again, pretty different solution again. Uh, involving a bit of VEX here as well. So interesting stuff. A little, a little for each loop in a while. Um, so here more VEX. So you can see the VEX solutions are not always the fastest, but it's 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 very interesting to see and. Uh, so it, it, I like I I found that interesting to see. Um, like I knew that a lot of the hard coded nodes are faster than VEX, uh, but it's still cool to see this sort of like, really play out also in the uh, when you're just doing this. So guys, not not VEX is not always better, um, but in some cases it is. So uh, there's a whole ton of more stuff you can go through yourself. I'm not gonna go through every single one here. Um, here myself, but like you can just download them. Again, the, the link to all of this stuff is in the description. Uh, the Excel here will also be in the description. You can look through the Excel and like just, you can pick out the ones that you are the fastest or slower ones and just compare how the workflows uh, were done. Oh yeah, maybe one more thing that I actually wanna show what I mentioned before is Johan Buchhoven's file is, if I open that one, which was also pretty fast by the way, just open it. So, Quite different here, um, but it's just mainly what I want to show here. And that's also when I was benchmarking this one is when I noticed uh, there was something wrong with, uh, <laughs> with like, the, like that I had the wrong build open. Um, so this one is pre pretty fast also in a compile block again, you know, a little bit of facts, a little bit of swaps, uh, quite nice solution with a, with a switch in here. Um, but let me just open the same file in Houdini 18. All right, so I know the UI now is very small, but again, we're not gonna be in here long. So uh, let me just check out the your book over. Where are you? Johan Buchhoven, there we go. Let's open it. Yes, it will become limited commercial, I know. All right, okay. All right, so in 18.5, you can see it gets, uh, it gets a very different result. Just, like I'm not sure what you know discussing this, but it was it's interesting to see regardless. Um, so I just want to just throw that in there as well. Just interesting to see. All right, so that was that. Um, I personally learned a lot. I saw a lot of cool techniques. Uh, saw a lot of no, like a bunch of notes that I did know exist. So I I learned a lot. Uh, I hope you did as well. So uh, like you can download all of the files in the description. You can go through them, check them out. Uh, I think it's going to be highly educational for everybody. And it was like, I had a lot of fun looking through all of this, benchmarking everything. Uh, so 
Congrats to, uh, to Falcon Sava uh, Savadre, Sa Savedra, Savedra, Falcon Savedra. <laughs> Messing up the names here, but con con congrats to for, for winning the fifty dollars worth of Bitcoin. I will contact you, uh, or maybe I might have already, and then you have already received your your Bitcoin, and then you can use that to keep it or to sell it and do fun stuff with it. Um, if any of you have suggestions for a future procedural puzzle, like if you have a interesting production scenario that you run ran ran into during production, if you think hey that might be interesting for a procedural puzzle, puzzle uh, you can contact me. Uh, because again, this puzzle was also based on a community uh, uh, com co community entry. So um, if you have an interesting thing, send it over. I'll check it out. I'll try to solve it sort of myself. And then if I think it's interesting, then I might use it for a uh, future procedural puzzles. Or of course, like if you want to organize your own procedural puzzles, uh, you can also do that. Um, so with that out of the way, just uh, thanks, for, thanks for watching. Hopefully I'll see you in another video. And another short thing is that I am actually going to take some time off from climate work to focus on the YouTube channel and making personal stuff. So you can probably expect more stuff on the channel coming soon. I just didn't have a lot of time the couple of, last couple of months. Uh, but I'm taking time off from client work to just make fun personal projects. And of course, like I always do, if I do personal projects, I upload all of the files to Patreon and Gumroad. Um, so that's gonna gonna be interesting for the channel hopefully uh, so let's see how that goes but um yeah if you like the video make sure to leave this a thumbs up uh and subscribe if you uh, uh if you want to see more of these videos so hopefully i'll see you in the next one peace